several years ago, Liberia, Africa's oldest independent nation, was a home to violence, destruction, and poverty. This West African nation suffered immense civil crisis, which left over 75% of the country basic services and infrastructure in ruins. Poverty struck with such a mighty blow, thus rendering over 85% of our citizens to live on less than a dollar. The country became that of men and not of laws. It was survival of the fittest. However, at the end of every turner, there is light, and for sure, Liberia's light did come. A country noted for setting records broke yet another record when Africa's first female president, Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, was inaugurated on January 16, 2006. Victory! Victory! You be victory! Madam Sully, a Harvard graduate with substantial credentials from home and abroad, such as former finance minister of the Republic of Liberia, former director of the United Nations Development Program, and former senior loan officer of the World Bank, took up the Herculean challenge to restore Liberia's lost dignity and pride. She is a leader. To me, she is the bridge between the past and the future. Our image internationally has definitely Ellen Johnson Sirleaf has become the first female president at the Library of Africa. She has achieved that. What she wants to leave is not just the fact that a lady has become a president. She wants to show that over and above being president, they can do it. And our ambition is to leave a legacy for women. And that's what I support. Times were hard before. Hmm. Times are even harder today. But I make this pledge to you. Under my administration, we will work to change that situation. In her fight to bring a change to Liberia, the government formulated a strategy called the Poverty Reduction Strategy. The Poverty Reduction Strategy, which constitutes the government's overall vision and developmental agenda, is anchored on four pillars peace and security, economic revitalization, infrastructure and basic services, and strengthening government and the rule of law. If you look at security, it's fundamental and cardinal to the overall development of the country. Uh, you're not going to have an economy if people cannot feel safe. Peace and stability. With a mind to succeed, the government did prioritize the training of the Liberian National Police and the Armed Forces of Liberia to safeguard the peace and to attract more investments into the country. Under the auspices, at least three top streets, they are located throughout the country uh, and they are performing their various functions. In addition to the trained officers, the government recently graduated several officers from the Emergency Response Unit which sole responsibility is to batter criminals in all areas of the country. This has greatly improved the security situation in the country, making it safe for investments to pool into the country. Foreign direct investment flow into Liberia in the last two and a half years has picked up dramatically. Uh, from a, a base of somewhere around uh, maybe 20 million in 2005 to 50 million in 2006, to 130 million in 2007, we're estimating in 2008 that there will be at least two to three hundred million dollars in foreign direct investment into Liberia, excluding the multi-billion dollar mining deals such as uh, Bong Mines and Western Cluster and Metal. Once there is sustained peace and reliable security, investors are bound to show up. Liberia, a country richly blessed with iron ore, gold, diamond, and a vast virgin forest can surely attract any investor. The 
individuals, heads of states, have said that they are prepared to do business with Liberia. We attracted over 400 uh, potential investors, including uh, the richest uh, black man in America, Robert L. Johnson. And as a result of that uh, investment forum in Washington, D.C., a number of direct investment deals have actually flowed to the country. If you had left Liberia over the last two and a half years and returned today, you would notice that there are a number of new buildings being erected. New investments are all around the country. I like to extend my appreciation to the government of Liberia for the enabling environment that they've created for uh, companies, industries, uh, and especially banks to do business and uh, grow in Liberia. Because of the conducive investment climate, Liberia is experiencing a multiply effect in her economy. Job opportunities and the increase in civil servant salaries are some of the benefits of a revitalized economy. This is really the tangible uh, barometer by which we try to measure our success. And each of these deals translates into real jobs for the Liberian people, which is the biggest socioeconomic imperative I believe that we face at this time in our, our history. Through the instrumentality and the ingenuity of the president of this country, the, the government of Liberia was able to rapidly increase the salary of civil servant. That has been a heavily tax burden on previous government. Some time ago when I was not in government, I said to somebody I will not work because I can raise the money that civil servants were making as salary. But within a short period of time, people began to see that civil servants are well paid and they are classified well. One of the things I want to commend the government for is the fact that people get paid on time. And, and I think that helps our people and it helps again begin to give our country a sense of purpose and people know that when they work, they get paid and get paid on time. The increase in the national budget is no exception. Revenues collected from these companies has boosted the national budget tremendously over the last few years. The scope of the expansion of the national budget, which has moved from $80 million in 2005, 2006, and in two and a half years, we have a budget of about $300 million. That's like a 300% increase over where we were. As the government is increasing the national budget, equally so are they striving to decrease the extended debt. For decades now, the Liberian government has had a debt of over $3.7 billion hanging over it. This government, after several discussions with partners, was able to get almost a billion dollars waived. Uh, we started to expand the economy. Last year we grew at 9.5%, uh, coming from a time when uh, we had negative growth. Our mines, our agriculture concession, our rubber industry are all trying to be reactivated. Uh, we've restructured the civil service, removed coastlines, we've raised civil service salaries. We've increased revenue from 80 million when we came to close to 300 million today. Uh, we've started to tackle infrastructure. We brought lights and water into the city for the first time in 14 years. Indeed, residents of Morovia can now boast of street lights in their city. Hope has been restored to an extent with the re-emergence of electricity. Residents can be seen staying up late at night unlike before. They now feel safe with the street lights. I term the occasion bringing light into darkness, the resurrection of light from the grave. And that's what we are celebrating today. And I want to thank her. I want to also say thank you, Madam President, for making me chairman of this whole situation. It gives me great joy on behalf of the European Commission and the European Union to be here present today to see the, the official planting of the first electricity pole for the electricity, emergency electricity project. On January the 16th, it didn't seem possible that we could actually bring electricity to the country. Uh, but the President insisted. She pushed. She shoved. She shouted, she gave me telephone calls, and here we are today. Though residents are grateful for the emergency power that have been provided, they still hope for the day that electricity will reach their very homes all over Liberia, where they will not have to use the popular target generators anymore. In conjunction with the restoration of power, the Liberian government also included water as part of a restoration package. Gradually, water is being restored to most parts 